Oh, it's getting good. List comprehensions are one of the coolest things about Python. Um, they're just such a joy to work with. They're a way, they're a very compact way of building lists or filtering lists. So I'll show you how you might do the same kinds of things without using this new syntax. Um, and they're, you know, it's kind of like large and awkward. And then I'll show you the beautiful new syntax. So in general, if you wanted to build up a list, you might have something like I have in my comment here. So my output list is called output and I initialize it to be an empty list. And then I'm going to loop over a bunch of things. And I might have an expression that calculates a new output value. And then I'm going to append that output value to the end of my list. So in general, that will let me build up a list. So let's do a quick example. Let's say I wanted a list that were uh, that is the square numbers uh, from one up to the square of 100. In that case, I could do something like this. I could say output equals the empty list for i in range up to 101, because um, that will end with 100. Um, and then I'll say output val equals i squared. Um, if you didn't know. This in Python, this is how you can raise something to the power of two. Um, and then my list is called output. So output.append, output val. Um, and then let's go ahead and print output. So I'll run the script. And there you can see it's a bunch of square numbers. OK, let me show you what this same thing looks like in a single line. So my list equals, and here's the syntax where I'm building a list. Only inside the list, I'm going to start with the output expression. Here, let's use i. So this was the expression I used for what I wanted my output value to be. And then I can have my loop right built in for i in range up to 101. So this single line, as you can see, builds the exact same list as like this whole loop. And this is much more compact. So in general, the syntax for a list comprehension is written here. So the output list is going to consist of a list of output values while you're looping over some list over here. So output val for val in list. Um, and this thing doesn't actually have to be a list. It could be any uh, what's called an iterable. It could be anything that you can iterate over. OK, let's do another example. So uh, here, I'm going to type it, and then I'll show it to you. All right, so if you look on the left-hand side here, now my output value is actually a list. So for each value in the range, I'm taking the square of that value and the cube of that value, and I'm making a two-element list. So the output here, when I run it, you'll see is actually going to be a list of lists, where you've got the squares as the first values and the cubes as the second values. Um, if you want to, go ahead and pause the video and try and make your own list comprehension version that outputs that same thing. Otherwise, I am making mine right now. So my list equals, um, so I'm going to build a list that consists of i squared and i cubed for all the values in i in range up to 10. So that single thing is going to be the same list, comp uh, that list comprehension is going to be the same list. And there you see it. Let's use this as an efficient way of building a list of random numbers. Um, so if you want to make random numbers, you have to import random. <clears throat> um, and then you can, let me show you how to just make random ints. So I can say random.randint, and then I can give it a range. Um, and notice here in the comment that's saying it includes both the endpoints. So range from one to 10, and now that's given me a random number. And there's another, and there's another. Okay, so what if I wanna make a whole list of these? So on the left, this is what it would look like in the old way of doing things. I'm looping 100 times, and the output value, oops, I deleted a key thing here. Um, the output value is going to be uh, a random number between 1 and 10, and then I'll append them. So we can run that. Uh, oh, I didn't know I had to. OK, so import random. OK, so there we go. So there's a list of 100 random numbers. But over in here, well, if you want to, go ahead and try and make your list comprehension that does the same thing. Otherwise, I'm going to make mine. I'm going to call it rand list. OK, fair warning. Pause the video. Give it a try. So my output value doesn't involve i. It's really just a random number between 1 and 10. Um, but I'm still doing it 10 times. So for i in range, oh, sorry, I'm still doing it 100 times. 
Um, oh, what? Oops. Got to get the method name right. <clears throat> Great. And then we'll print brand list, and there it is. So I could put those last two examples together. Let's say I wanted to make a whole bunch of random points, each of which has an x, y coordinate. In that case, I could say something like points equals a new list, and each list is going to have an x coordinate and a y coordinate. So I'll have random dot rand in between negative 100 and 100, and that'll be the x coordinate. And then my y coordinate will be another random dot. <clears throat> dot rand int between negative 100 and 100 um, for uh, i in range up to 100. So this is going to give me 100. Well, let's do let's do 10. So this is going to give me 10 lists, each of which has uh, a random number between negative 100 and 100 for the x and y coordinates. Um, so let's look at what it looks like. And there you see them. So this one line has now given us a really like quick way of generating a whole bunch of random points. So let's pretend that, well, so look on the left here. So I copied and pasted my line of code that generates the random list of points right here on line nine. So even though it's cut off and you can't read it, it's the same line. So let's pretend I've got this list of points now. What if I wanted to extract all of the X coordinates and make them into their own list? This is, this is like one of the main things that list comprehensions are very useful for. Um, so here's the version without a list comprehension. Same thing, I've got an empty output list. Here I'm calling point my variable that's going to take on each value in this list, points. Um, and then what I want to append to my output list is just the first element in point, which was the x-coordinate. Um, so if I run this code, you'll see, well, I should have all right, so here's point, the points list. I've got 50, negative 73, 79, negative 21, and so on. And you can see that uh, the output list that I generated here consists of just the x coordinates, 50, 79, negative 92. You can see that here. Um, let's look and see what that would look like as a list comprehension. All right, so you see right here my line of code that generates the random points. And now I have, oops, now I have run it. Um, so let's make an x-coordinates list where I'm going to uh, compose a list where, let's see, sometimes it's helpful to think of the loop, loop first. So for uh, point in points, and I've already defined my points list here, so that's why I can iterate over it. And what do I want my output values to be? I want to take point and just get the first element out of it. So uh, point zero for point in points, um, and now x chords, well here, let's do the same thing for y chords. So let's compose a list of uh, the y coordinates of the original, and then we can verify it's all worked. So here's points, here's x chords, and it should be negative 50, negative 40, 34, and so it is, and here's y chords. So again, you can see hopefully how flexible this is. Let's do just a couple more examples. Um, so sometimes uh, the output value here, it's helpful to have a more complicated expression, like maybe one that runs a function that you yourself have defined. All right, so if you look on the left-hand side here, I have defined a function called grade for score, and it will just check the score and return the corresponding letter grade. So let's go ahead, oh, what happened here? Okay, uh, all right, so here we are. Um, let's just run it so we can see what happens. So here, grade for uh, like 92 is an A, grade for 12 is an F, grade for 76 is a C. So we can see that working. So now let's say that we have a list of scores. Um, we'll have random.randint between 0 and 100 uh, for I in range up to, let's just do, just do 20 random grades. So here's what the scores look like. What if I want to uh, map all of those scores into actual letter grades? So I could do this. I could say grades equals, and then I'd run my grade for method um, val, but what are the values? So for val in my list of scores. 
So now val is going to loop over my scores list. For each of those scores, I'm going to run it through this function that returns a letter grade. And now I can see, oops, now I can see all the grades. Ah, very nice. Um, it might be nice to actually have uh, like tuples or sublists where I don't just have the grade, but I actually have the score and the grade. So let's do this. Um, so I'm going to define grade list to be um, a sublist that consists of both the val and the grade for the val for all the vals in scores. And now if we look at grade list, we see uh, both the score and the corresponding letter grade. So again, like so powerful that I can do all of this in one line of code and like so much joy. You gotta experience the joy. Oh, shish kebab. I forgot, uh, there's one last uh, very powerful thing that you can do with these that I can't believe I didn't tell you until now, 10 minutes in. Uh, that's all right, let's do it. You can also use list comprehensions to filter a list. Uh, so let's go ahead and well, let's do a simple example first. So let's say I'm going to make a random list. So do I already have random numbers? No. All right. So rand nums equals a list of random dot rand int from, I don't know, one to a hundred for I in range a hundred. All right. So there's my random numbers. What if I have this list of, whoops, what if I have this list of values and I want to make a new list that consists only of the numbers within a certain range. So I want to loop over this list and I just want to select out ones that are between, let's say, 20 and 30. So let's make a list called filtered and I'll show you that, how that works. So I want to I want to have a new list that consists of values from the old list. So I'll say val for val in, what did I call my list? Was it randnums? Randnums. So if I do this, I'm looping over all the values in random numbers and I'm making a new list of all of the values from the old list. So that's useless. But here you can have a, a predicate, an if statement. So only if 10 is less than or equal to val is less than or equal to 20. Um, or let's do 30. So here, it's only going to include this output value if the output value satisfies that expression. And so if I run it, and then I show you what the filtered list looks like, now it's only values that were in the range from 10 to 30. And so I filtered out all of the other values. Let's do the same thing for grade list. So this is what grade list looked like. It was a list of sublists where the first element is a score and the second element is a grade. So what if I want to select out only non-failing grades because we've got a lot of Fs in there. Um, so I'm going to make a list of passing students and I'll have a list comprehension and I'm going to have val for val in grade list. But now I want to have my test. I only want to include the ones where uh, the score is passing. So I could do this. I could say if val element zero is greater than 50 um, because that's passing. So let's see what that looks like. There we go. Or if I wanted to, instead of testing the first element, I could test the second element. So if val equals or <coughs> that a thing? If, well, I could certainly do this. I could say if, whoops, if uh, val one not in the tuple of Fs. And so then passing, again, so I filtered out the passing grades. Um, only this time I filtered, the, I filtered out the non-passing grades, but this time I filtered them based on the letter itself. Um, if I wanted to, I could say, let's look at just the A's and B's. Um, and this could be a tuple or it could be a list. So I could make a list here either way. And all I'm saying here is check to see if the grade that I've extracted from the one I'm looping over is represented in this other list. And so now here are just the A's and B's. So again, super, super flexible. All right, that's more than enough. Uh, I hope this has been 
fun, and you should definitely like go nuts here and make a whole bunch of list comprehensions. Enjoy!